Today I'll show you how I take my drums from something like this to this I'll be mixing the drums for the song I wrote for this video. If you haven't seen it yet, you can click in the upper right corner to go to that video. So let's disable the processing on all of the tracks and walk through how I mix each track one by one. Small disclaimer, of course this is only how I mix my stuff. Of course there are a million ways to mix and no way is necessarily better than the other. If it sounds good, it doesn't matter how you got there. But okay, let's start with the kick. Let's listen to what this track sounds like without any processing. Sounds kind of dull, so let's do something about that. First up, there's an EQ here, starting with a high pass at 45Hz. And then there's a very small cut at around 100Hz. And next up, there's a very large cut at 200Hz to eliminate some of that boominess. And then cutting some mids, and then cutting some high mids, and also boosting some of the highs and also a low pass here. So this is what the EQ looks like for the kick. Next up, there's a compressor here with some fairly traditional settings. So slow attack and fast release and the four to one ratio, aiming for about three decibels of gain reduction. Next up, we have some console saturation here, as well as a small boost to the high end of the track. And lastly, we have some more saturation. So let's listen to what each plugin does to the sound of this track. I also have another kick sample here, reinforcing the main kick track. I think this is actually Steven Slate Drum's Kick 10. So this is what it sounds like unprocessed. As you can hear, it's very low in the mix. It's only there to reinforce the main kick in a very subtle way. As with the main kick track, it starts with an EQ here, with a high pass, cutting out some mud, also cutting out some of the mids and the high mids, and also boosting some of the highs. And it also has compression with similar settings, as well as console saturation and a bump to the highs, and also some more saturation. So let's listen to what each plugin does to this track. And this is what the two tracks sound like together. By the way, if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. But okay, so let's take a look at the snare tracks. I think an important thing to realize when you're mixing the snare is that most likely each snare track is gonna sound quite awful on its own. You are unlikely to get the snare sound that you have in your head from just one track. I find what works for me is mixing each track with a purpose. So I'm trying to extract a certain characteristic with each track that I want in my snare. So for the snare top track, I'm trying to get the body out of the snare. And from the snare bottom track, I'm trying to get the high end crack out of the snare. And I kind of consider the room tracks to be part of the snare tracks as well, as they have mostly the snare in them. So for the room close track, I'm trying to get the small smack out of snare, so to speak. And from the room far track, I'm trying to get the big smack. But okay, let's take a listen to what the snare top track sounds like, unprocessed. First up, there's an EQ here that completely demolishes some ringing frequencies, I noticed. Let's see if you can hear what it eliminates. And then I have another EQ, press the high pass and then a very small boost to 150 to get a bit more body out of the snare. And then a small cut in the lower mids, another cut in the mids and another big cut in the high mids and a small boost to the highs. Let's listen to what this EQ does. It sounds kind of dull, but again, the idea here is that this track should provide the body of the snare, so it's okay. And again, we have a compressor with the same settings, so slow attack, fast release, 4 to 1 ratio, aiming for about 3 decibels of gain reduction. We have some console saturation, small boost to the highs, and some more saturation. So let's listen to what each of these plugins does to the sound. <laughs> 
Let's go over to the snare bottom track, starting with an EQ, again cutting out some of the ringing frequencies of the snare, and then another EQ, which kind of mirrors that of the snare top track, and again a compressor. But here I actually have a fast attack, as I found that worked better for this track. And I actually have another compressor here, that gives this track a bit more sustain. And again, some console saturation, and small boost to the highs, and also some more saturation. So let's listen to what each plugin does to the sound of this track. Let's actually go straight to the room tracks now, as those contain mostly the snare. So this is what it sounds like unprocessed. So let's go over the plugins on this track. First up, again there's an EQ cutting out some of the ringing frequencies of the snare. And then we have another EQ that is very similar to the snare top track, boosting some low mids here, also cutting out some mud and some mids and also a fair bit of the high mids and also boosting some highs. Again we have a compressor set to fast attack and fast release to give the track a bit more sustain and also another compressor here also aiming for about 3 decibels of gain reduction. We have some console saturation and also a small boost to the highs and some more saturation. Saturation actually sounds really good on the room tracks so there's a fair bit of it here. So let's listen to what each plugin does to this track. And the processing on the room far track is basically identical to the room close track. It sounds like this. And each of the room tracks also has their dedicated reverb track as well. They are fairly low in the mix, but they give the snare a bit of a bigger sound. Let's just quickly have a look here at the setup of the reverb track. So first up, there's just a band pass here, and then we have the reverb fairly low decay time and we also have the center plug in here to make it sound a bit more wide so let's listen to the room far track here with and without the reverb it's very subtle but i think it gives the snare a bit of a bigger sound so let's listen to all of the snare tracks together that is the snare top track the snare bottom track but also the room tracks as I consider them to be basically additional snare tracks. Alright, let's move over to the toms. So I have four tom tracks here. Each of them has an individual EQ with a high pass, a small boost in varying places in the lows. And then they all get sent to a tom track, which starts with an EQ. So we got a high pass, cutting out some mud in the lower mids. Again, cutting out some mids. Also cutting out some high mids, as well as boosting the highs. We have the, by now, fairly familiar compressor plugin. Again, aiming for about 3 decibels of gain reduction. We have some console saturation, small boost to the highs. We have some saturation and we have a small limiter just to bring the volume up a tiny bit. We also have two reverb tracks just to give the toms a bit of a larger presence in the mix. So this is what each of the plugin does to the toms track. And all of the shell tracks is actually piped into a shells group track where I do some additional bus processing. It starts with a very simple EQ, just a tiny high pass and a low pass. Also cutting out a tiny amount of mud here in the low mids, as well as cutting out some sharpness in the higher mids. And we also have a compressor here, which adds a fair bit of nice saturation, but also brings down some of the peaks, which gives these tracks some glue and also a bit more sustain. And then we have another compressor here, which has the same role. And again, just basically repeating the EQ we had at the beginning. So let's listen to what these plugins does to the sound. So let's go to one of my favorite tracks here, 
the parallel compression track. The idea here is instead of compressing each individual track so much that it completely sucks the life out of the tracks, you send all of these shell tracks to different tracks, which basically annihilates the tracks and compresses them to hell and back. And then you blend that track in to give the drums a bit more punch, a bit more sustain, but still retaining the life of the tracks, so to speak. So let's go over the plugins that are on this track. Starting with a familiar EQ, cutting out some ringing frequencies from the snare. Then we have a basic EQ here, cutting out some of the high mids and cutting out some of the low mids, because these frequencies tend to build up when you're compressing heavily. And then we start the compression chain here with fast attack, fast release and actually aiming for about 10 decibels of gain reduction here. And then we have another compressor, again aiming for about 10 decibels of gain reduction. And then we basically have the same EQ here. We have our console saturation, a bit of a boost to the highs. We have some saturation and we have a limiter which further compresses the tracks. So this track sounds like this. It sounds awful on its own, but when blended in with the rest of the tracks, it gives the drums a bit more punch and a bit more sustain than mix. Let's listen to the drums with and without the parallel compression track. Definitely gives them a bit more punch. So alright, let's take a look at the overheads track. I actually have symbols from both Modern and Massive and also Invasion, so I route them to different tracks here. So I noticed that the modern and massive tracks are, are a bit brighter. So to kind of level that out, the modern and massive track dials down the highs of the cymbals a bit, while the Invasion tracks brings up the highs of the cymbals a bit. And those are then fed to the overheads track, which sounds like this unprocessed. So let's go over the plugins on this track. Starting with an EQ, cutting out some of the ringing frequencies of the snare. Then we have a simple EQ here, fairly aggressive high pass, also cutting some low mids, some mids, some high mids, but also boosting some of the highs. Then we have a familiar compressor here, again aiming for around 3 decibels of gain reduction. This compressor is basically just responding to the snare here. Then we have some console saturation boost to the high and some minor saturation. And the overhead track actually has their own reverb as well. So let's listen to what each plugin does to this track. I also have tracks for the hi-hat and the ride spot mics. So for the hi-hat track, this is basically just here to give the hi-hat a bit more presence and percussiveness to the mix. And the same goes for the ride track. And then all of these are piped into the cymbals group track, which has essentially the same plugins as the shells group track. So that's all of the tracks. Let's listen to what it sounds like. And this is what it sounds like in the mix. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, there might be another video on the screen that might also be in your interest. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.